Welcome back to MJL3764 collecting Elvis on vinyl and CD. This is the third and final video concerning the Elvis Memphis 5 CD box set. If you've missed part one and part two I would urge you to take a look at them first as we're up to disc four on this video. So we'll dive straight in. This four features what they call the Homecoming Concert, which is March the 20th, 1974. Elvis has recorded live on stage in Memphis at the Mid-South Coliseum. Now we had this album originally, as we all know, in 1974 when it was edited and had awful applause added to it. I can understand why it was edited to a single album at the time as Aloha had just been issued the year before which was a double live album but us fans waited a long long time to hear the whole concert we got it or we thought we got it on FTD uh, there were bits missing the full start to help me and a bit of dialogue was missing and then we got the legacy version which was a complete show which has been my go-to uh, ever since However, this one, when I first heard it, I heard only one track. I thought it sounded a little bit bassy. But on hearing the whole concert, which I tried to actually hear the whole concert in one go, it runs for 70 minutes. There's 25 tracks on disc four. Uh, but I was interrupted, so I heard the first part through the speakers and the last part through the uh, ear goggles, as Jimi Hendrix would say, uh, headphones. And uh, I must be honest, uh, I think this is a winner. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. It is a little bit more bassy. Uh, on listening to this box set, I haven't sat down and compared uh, the previous recordings with this one. I've only heard this one. So I'll have to go back and have a listen to the legacy again. Uh, I was well impressed with that at the time. But this one sounds to me very, very good. So I think this one's a winner. Uh, that's the homecoming concert very good but of course I still stand by my original stand that this should have been just a, a, a studio box set uh, I don't think they should have put live stuff on here but it does sound very good moving on to disc 5 it's the Graceland disc which runs for 61 minutes and features 16 tracks now again 61 minutes if I had to gripe I'd say I would have liked to have seen the up-tempo version of She Thinks I Still Care added to this one as well but that's just a minor gripe so we start off with the Boulevard album which would be Hurt which sounded very good yeah a lot more bassy I thought but very good uh, Never Again that was very good quite not dissimilar to, to the version that we've already got on the Boulevard album. Uh, Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. Yep, very good. Obviously the the little swirl they put on Elvis's voice isn't there. The little studio wizardry that they put on the original. And this one has a longer fade out. So yeah, very good. Danny Boy's next. Danny Boy, I, I haven't heard a bad version. We've got a few outtakes of this. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Uh, the next track, The Last Farewell, I think this one suffers. This is a dramatic song. Uh, most of these songs are. I know a lot of people have a lot of problems with the, the backing, the orchestration on the Boulevard album. I, I don't see why. I, I have a problem sometimes with backing singers, like, you know, uh, Amazing Grace and Help Me and stuff like that, where they're drowned in Elvis out. Although, as we know, that's the way Elvis liked it. He liked other voices, but... Personally, I'd rather just hear Elvis, but I have no problem with the backing. The strings and horns arranged by Burgeon White and, and Felton Jarvis's production. This album comes in for a lot of criticism, but these were the same guys that were producing records in 1970, Burgeon White and Felton Jarvis, you know, from the That's The Way It Is period, and nobody had anything to say about their orchestrations on them. So I don't get it. And I think when you've got ballad material like this it needs that sort of sweetening and arrangements and I think The Last Farewell suffers a lot without all the, the orchestration 
I think it sounds very bare. Uh, so I do much prefer the original uh, than this version on here. For the Heart is next. Uh, yeah, that features a longer fade out. That's very good. Sounds very different from the Our Memories of Elvis version. But of course, that was when this undubbed stuff was in its infancy. I think they just mucked around with a few faders on the Our Memories of Elvis. But you could actually hear him sing the uh, the backing part a little bit more. The Dream About No One But You bit. Uh, you don't hear that on this one, which you can hear on the Our Memories of Elvis. But yeah, very good. Yeah, enjoyed it. Yeah. A uh, bit of They Are, Harder They Fall. I love this one. It's one of my favourites from, from this album. Uh, that was okay, but still prefer the original. Uh, Solitaire, I thought was very good. I, I, again, I do like the original, but I thought this one was a very good version as well. Very good. Elvis voice, crystal clear. I enjoyed that. Love Coming Down's next. Uh, that, again, is not dissimilar to the original, what we've already got. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. And I'll Never Fall In Love Again, I think, suffers the same as The Last Farewell. I think the backing is, make, makes that one uh, a little better than what it is on here. Moody Blues next, that features a long fade. That's okay, but love the original, but it's love, lovely to get a, a longer fade of that. Great song. Uh, she Thinks I Still Cares next. That features a longer fade out, and that was very good. I enjoyed that. Way Down's next, which I didn't enjoy at all, to be honest. Again, I can probably see people say, oh, I love this, the bass, etc., but not for me. I thought that was very messy, very muddy, uh, and, and just bassy. It's, uh, it reminded me, it's not that bad, but it reminded me when I was younger, of listening to a really bad tape cassette, you know, which is just muffled, bassy, sounds like it's been recorded in a submarine at the bottom of the ocean. Really sounds submerged, a horrible sound. I didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't like it way down at all. Sorry, but it wasn't for me, that one. Uh, He'll Have to Go's next. Uh, James Burton's guitar is a little bit more in the background, the, the solo. I thought in this one and the clicks are gone so if you're used to the original on Moody Blue I'm sure they were on the undubbed version as well but they seem to have cleaned up the clicks which I always thought was Elvis's hands clasping the the microphone but the clicks are now gone so yeah that that was okay uh, pledging my loves next that one's for five minutes eleven and you can hear Elvis sing over the guitar and it's a very good version, yeah. I enjoyed that, and it's easy for you. Yeah, I thought that was very good as well. So let's take a, a final summary. Disc one and disc four, I thought were great. But then again, a lot of fans would have had the Sun material and the Memphis concert. But I thought they were really good. Disc two, 24 tracks. I thought 12 tracks were really good. I thought 12 tracks were not so good. Some I thought were awful. We'll get back to that one in a minute. Disc 3. 23 tracks. Out of these, I enjoyed 20 of these tracks. So only 3 tracks I, I wasn't too enamoured with. So definitely my favourite disc of the set. Disc 3, The Stacks. And Disc 5, The Graceland Disc. Uh, I enjoyed 11 out of the 16 of these tracks. So that wasn't bad either. So all in all, not, not too bad. But as I said earlier, the, the American recordings, uh, Jogerson and this Matt Wasbang. I know a lot of people like this Matt Wasbang. A lot of people have been saying how, how good he is. Uh, I think he's okay. He's doing his job. Uh, but he certainly hasn't done his job on this one. Uh, the pair of them haven't really. If I was them to, I'd be living like hermits, hiding under the bed at this point in time. I know a lot of people will say, oh, Mike, you're getting out of your tree. It's not that bad. It is that bad. Someone said to me recently, when I said about this disc, uh, they said, oh, but this is Elvis's legacy. If we knock it, they'll not issue any more Elvis material. 
Well, that's the whole bloody point. This is Elvis's legacy, and it's being treated extremely badly. The American recordings sounded fine. Now they don't. They sound disjointed. It looks like Elvis and the band haven't got any connection whatsoever. They're not in any coordination whatsoever. This is not good for Elvis's legacy. And let alone Elvis's legacy, not even the Memphis boys. What about Reggie's legacy and Bobby and Gene's? It sounds like they don't know what they're doing. It sounds like they're not in time with each other. That's not a good legacy, especially when we know originally they sounded fine, these recordings. So I really, I really do have a problem with that on this disc. This too, no, I really don't. And, and what's going on here? Where's the Colonel? Ring the office. This is an Elvis release. Only Elvis's name should be on the cover. On the hype sticker as well. And it's not done well. But yeah, that's that's a, a big gripe for me. But I must be honest, uh, I do buy the undubbed. I did buy the Nashville sets. Uh, they're interesting for me. I don't like the overdubbed stuff. I, I keep away from Royal Philharmonic Orchestra and, and duets and stuff like that. I do buy the undubbed stuff because I think it's interesting. But to be honest, I prefer the originals. They're my memories. They're, that's what I grew up with. Listening to Way Down, the way it sounded on the radio and on my record player is how I remember Elvis. They're, they're, they're my memories and... Even though these are interesting to hear, it's lovely to get the longer fade-outs. I love that. Uh, I would still probably play the originals more than I would play these. But I would probably play these every now and then, yes. Uh, again, I did say in the first video I was going to pass it by. Uh, I didn't. I bought it because it was £33. And if you can get it for a price like that, I would say get it if you want it for the collection because some of the tracks do sound really good but we cannot brush this under the carpet and say oh Matt Ross bang or Yogerson had a bad day they didn't have their coffee that morning and, and, and make excuses for them this is unexcusable what they've done and they really need to come out and apologise for it really for to all the Elvis fans this should not have got to the stage it's got which is being sold to the public the way it is so that's just my opinion I know some people will probably shoot me down and saying I'm being too harsh on it but that's my opinion if you can get it for £33 or thereabouts I believe it's 39 99 on Amazon at the moment and some of the sites are selling it for £48, £50 uh, personally I, I wouldn't pay that much for it but for £33 I'm glad I got it to be honest so if you can pick it up for that amount of money I would say invest in it but beware of uh, disc 2 uh, it would I mean that's the highlight of this these discs for me is the American recordings and uh, it's, it's not there but the stack stuff I thought was wonderful the picture on the cover of this box is a picture of Elvis in 1972 where he's standing next to Ingelbert Humbledink which has been cut out uh, I do have this photograph, I was trying to find it to show it to you, uh, but unfortunately all my books are boxed up at the moment. But uh, it's it's not a bad photograph, yeah. But I'll have to check the, the hand, it looks like Elvis has got the hand of the Hulk here. Looks out of proportion, but uh, not a bad cover. So, until the next time, thank you for watching, and just remember, while there's music, life's no waste.